Okay, I'm getting ready to build my manifold for the uh, pressure check on my um, radiant heat flooring. So I've got a couple of manifolds for water. These are just uh, shark bite connectors. Um, it was actually cheaper for me to buy the shark bite connectors and to buy the tools to actually crimp everything on. And then plus I can take these off and reuse them. So I'll be reusing these manifolds inside the house. Um, it's got a garden hose, pressure gauge. Um, this will be to air it up. And I've got five runs. So you can see I've got four, five. What I can do with one of those runs is just route it back into here. And then the other side of those runs will just be um, uh, blocked off. I just have plugs in them. So I'm going to go ahead and assemble this and then um, hook it up. Sorry for the wind. So I've got everything set up here and I got my 60 pounds of pressure. This little um, gauge is supposed to keep it in line. Well now it's ticking. It's not doing it realize now I've got 60 pounds. So what you do is you leave the air pressure in there and then um, check it again tomorrow make sure that it hasn't gone down at all. It may go down you know as the day cools because right now it's kind of sunny and it's about 75 so as the day cools of course the pressure is going to go down a little bit but as long as I haven't lost you know probably more than 5-10 pounds of pressure then I'm good to go so as long as I can get down to 50 then we'll be fine to pour tomorrow um, you leave the pressure in it while they're pouring so that if for some reason they accidentally cut a line which is rare uh, but you'll know it, it'll start hissing and you know, spitting everywhere. So one thing I need to research on is that if that happens, what material I'm supposed to use to fix it with. You know, it's got to be in concrete, so it needs to be something that isn't going to react with the uh, chemicals in the concrete. Um, so I'll figure that out today and go buy me a couple of couplings just in case we have a blowout. Um, doubt that will happen, but it's always good to be prepared. So on shark bikes, bites when I was doing this because people said you can't use shark bites they're made for water well shark bites seal up to 200 psi and um, that doesn't seem to matter what you have in them so of course I've got 60 pounds in there and it's holding strong I will check back later and make sure everything's okay the one thing I sh probably should have done I'm wishing I did now was I put all my 90s with the extension part facing up so what I should have done was went ahead and got the extensions, run them up probably two feet, and then screwed those to the board and not screwed my pipe to the board. I'm not worried about the pipe breaking or anything, but if I would have screwed the um, conduit to the board, then I would have had my spacing a lot better. It would have, uh, down here at the bottom, you can see they're all close but not perfect. I could have had that done damn near perfect. And uh, being a little bit of a perfectionist like I am that really kind of aggravates me that I didn't do that. But anyways, um, you want to somehow prop it up so that when they're pouring it's not in the way. Of course the bucket and the compressor will move, but just attach the board on there and put a wire down to the rebar on the bottom to keep it from flopping around while they're pouring. It'll get jostled a little bit, but shouldn't be anything too extreme. Um, Ideally, I would have had some sort of structure to tie this to up top and then I uh, could have made really made it straight, but you know, this is going to be underneath the stairwell. No one's going to see it and be aggravated about it like I will be because I would want to go to work on it and every time I see that bottom messed up, I'm going to think, you idiot, but that's how it goes. So anyways, pouring tomorrow. Uh, pump truck's supposed to be here at 7.30. We're supposed to start pouring at 8.00. See how it goes. I'm marking anchor bolts now. So you can see my tick marks right there. So what I did is put this in AutoCAD and I ran it as if I started a wall from either end and uh, lined up all the studs where they'd be centered at and then determined that wherever I put an anchor bolt, no matter which way I frame it, I shouldn't have an anchor bolt landing on top of a, a stud. Uh, back when I used to do construction a long time ago um, 
didn't do a whole lot, but on, on some of the slab work that we did, where we had a, uh, you know, someone just walked around and basically just stuck anchor bolts and just shoved them in every couple feet. The problem with that is that you end up, a lot of times, having to knock an anchor bolt out or move a stud over and it's a real pain. So I'm trying to avoid that by doing this. We'll see if it works. It's kind of an experiment. But um, I'm marking them all off and if it works great. If not, well, I just lost, you know, maybe a half hour of my time. Well, the guy's gonna be pouring the concrete tomorrow just left and said everything looks good. So they'll be out here at uh, 7.30 to start the pour. I've got a meeting to be at, so I may come out here and set the GoPro and then take off after that, but it's getting to me. I keep looking at those radiant heat lines coming up out of the ground, and I gotta go get the parts. I gotta go fix that. It's just gonna bug the crap out of me. So, it's about up 2 o'clock. I'm gonna run to Home Depot. And then uh, grab some conduit, come back, disassemble everything, reassemble everything, and then uh, repressurize, and it'll be done after that. Everything else is good to go. But I know if I don't fix that now, man, the rest just everything's just it's just gonna bug me. I gotta go do it. So off the home. Which perk to the uh, manifold that I made here is I can shut the valve off. So I can shut the valve off, loosen this one, let a little bit of air out, just this chamber, and then I can adjust it to let air out of the rest of it. That way you're not getting a uh, big sploosh of air all of a sudden. So having this little garden hose valve is pretty handy. Um, went ahead and bought my conduit, cut it up into two foot sections so I can run a line from there up two feet, and then I can space those out accordingly so they look nice and neat instead of the jumbled up mess they are right now because I'm just OCD like that. So, let this finish doing its thing and emptying out the line and I'll start putting it back together and then repressurize. So I was sitting back in the hammock just checking things out relaxing while my uh, new system was new manifold over there was repressurizing the system and I was just kind of looking across the top of the um, forms and this form just didn't line up quite right. And looking back, you can see how there's this bow right here. So I've got an anchor bolt there and an anchor bolt there. And right here, the wood bowed. And so luckily I was just sitting off and waiting for the lines to pressurize. And I just happened to notice that, so glad I did. I'm going to go through and drill a new hole right here. Tap con that down and then re-level it. But uh, if I hadn't done that... The part of this floor, and they ran the screed across, it would have had a, a hump. So I went ahead and looked everywhere else, and everything else looks to be okay. It's just just this one spot. So lucky, I got that found and can get it fixed real quick. So I'll go ahead and do that now, and then um, go back over and show you what the manifold looks like that I just redid. I'm gonna show you what I'm looking at here. So this is what I saw. When you get down low, all the forms should line up and disappear at the same time. Right there. So what was happening is that that form on the right that I just put back down had a big hump in it. So as I came down, it was level up here. And I could still see the framing off on the left. So now I got it tied back down. Now it's right where it should be. Now underneath your slab, you put a uh, piece of foam right underneath your base plate. And that foam will help take care of any uh, minor imperfections. So the slab's not going to be perfect. It's going to have a little bit of up and down here and there. So putting that foam under it will keep um, it's called a bug guard or bug screen I guess and it, it uh, squishes into the gaps that uh, are left when your um, slab isn't perfectly straight. So should still be fine. But glad I caught that. Looked at everything else and See here as you come down, it all disappears at the same time. Right there. So we know we're level. Um, not only that, but I put a laser to everything a couple, or was a couple weeks ago, whenever it was. Two weeks, a week ago? I don't know what the hell. I don't know what day it is. Anyways, put a laser on it and 
lined it up that way. But this is treated lumber, and of course treated lumber likes to bow and bend. And uh, so far that's the only board right there that I saw that had done that. But glad I caught it, because in less than, well, probably about 16 hours, I guess, they're going to be pouring this, so good to go. Okay, now I can sleep tonight. I redid the manifold. It looks wonderful. So before it was all just kind of a sloppy mess. But now I've got everything labeled. It's all attached to board, so it's all even with each other. Um, some of the pieces at the bottom could probably come up a little bit or down a little bit, but can't be. I'm picky, but <laughs> not that picky. Anyway, back up to 60 pounds. Everything's looking good. Just gotta leave it here for the uh, night. Come back in the morning. Ooh, a little bee. Um, come back in the morning, set up the uh, GoPro. For about seven o'clock or so, wait for the, the construction guys to get here and then I'll take off. Of course, the board in the back's crooked. That's gonna come off once everything's done. It'll be attached to the wall and be straight. But I'm much happier with the way this has turned out versus the way it was before. It was just a mess. And perk is that it's now self-supporting. So I had a wire on it before and it was still kind of flopping around, but now the sucker's not going anywhere. So when they pour, it should be nice and good. Also, I had a bunch of zip ties trying to keep all these together down below. And um, that happened to be right at the level where the concrete was going to be finished at. So that obviously was not a good thing. So, looks all good. Hopefully tomorrow I'll show you a video of it, of the pour being done and looking beautiful. That would be fantastic. Walking back from feeding the cats and happened to look over and spotted a little, little leaf snake. You see these guys very often. Of course they blend in really well. I'm surprised I even saw him. But he's just hanging out.